Today we are needle felting this little woodsy owl that you can also make into a little ornament and you can grab the kit or you can also uh, get a PDF which will list the steps. It'll include some basic diagrams and patterns and we'll also um, tell you all the supplies we're going to use. So we will look at all of those together. Thank you so much for being here. The fiber for this project, we're going to use wool batting and wool sliver. You might call it roving. We'll start with our core wool. This is CW1 core wool. You'll use a half ounce or 15 grams for your bird. Wool batting, we have Maori in barnwood. We have our CX2 winter white and the New Zealand Coriadale in acorn, natural medium and natural dark. Here's a look at some of the tools and materials we'll be using your typical needle felting tools and some other things we use for the armature along with our glass eyes, our clay, some measuring devices and cutting devices and glues. For a full explanation, download the PDF or grab the kit. From your wool felt, use the pattern to cut out two wings and one tail. To get these beautiful glittery glass eyes, it's really very easy. Bend the wire of the glass eyes so that as the glue dries, you have gravity in your favor to hold it into little puddles on the back of the eye, and then just set them to dry. I usually leave mine to dry overnight. The next day, the glue will dry more flush and won't leave a big mound on the back of the eye. And they look beautiful and sparkly. Pinch a small amount of clay to form your beak. Use a flat surface so you can make the underneath side flat and then I put points at the top and the bottom of the beak. The entire length is about three quarters inches long. Bend a short wire and insert it to the back of the beak. The wire gets inserted to a small mound of clay. I reuse these little mounds over and over because they're a great support for baking small pieces. And then bake. Follow the instructions on your clay. Ours is 275 for 30 minutes for a quarter inch of clay. This is very thin, so I go about 20 minutes. Once your clay is cooled, use a colored pencil or paint to add character to the beak. And then I like to finish mine off with a matte nail polish. You might also have a paint that's matte or gloss as you prefer. To create the legs, we're using 22 gauge wire. Cut four pieces at 12 inches each. Two wires are used for each leg. Begin wrapping at the midpoint, which is six inches for us. We're going to twist one and a quarter inches from the middle in each direction until we have 2.5 inches of wire twisted together right up the middle. Fold this in half and twist. This forms the leg for our owl. These four wires will be bent in half for our toes. Cut each to three inches. I use my quilter square to fold the toe in half. I put it at the halfway point and fold it in half. Twist each of these toe wires back to the leg and snip off any extra wire. Once both feet are made, I position them on the branch so that they are about a half inch apart and wrap the toes as tightly around the branch as you can and glue them in place. You can use super glue or a glue gun or regular craft glue and then you just need to let them set overnight. To make the head, we're just going to needle felt a little ball. And again, you have the size guide in the PDF. I start with a long strip of fiber, ideally. I pinch it very tight. I'm holding tension. I'm going to tuck this in and roll and tuck this in and roll. We want our shapes to be very, very firm. So needle felt them as you go along and get those fibers all laying down. 
I am using a coarse 36 triangle needle and we're just going to roll and tuck and roll and tuck and then needle felt as we go to get everything laying down. Keep needle felting that until your ball is about this size. Then we're gonna needle felt the body in the same way. The difference is it's going to be a little more oblong to start. And again, very, very firm. And what you wanna do is keep adding wool around this part of the torso and to the top. And at the bottom, we want to start shaping a point. So you will needle felt this, sort of you want your needle, if your needle goes at the angle that you're wanting the shape to be, then compress here. So it just gets a little more pointy as you go. Once you have your shapes in place, I like to use the doll needle to decide uh, how I want to position that head. So you can go right into the top of the head with a long doll needle and then right into the body and play with how you want your owl's head. Maybe you want him set a little back from the chest. Maybe you want him a little to the side. Whatever position you want, this doll needle will really help you get there. I like my eye sockets on the owl a little bit closer to what's going to be the base of the head and I like to flatten this bottom a little bit. Once you decide where those eye sockets go, see how they're not quite in the middle? Just leave a little space between them for the mounting the beak and you're just going to use a very coarse needle like a 36 or a 32 and start creating those eye sockets and just keep poking until you have a nice bed for your eye to sit in. You don't want the eyes sitting on top of the face. You definitely want them a little more seated in. My guide for that is to take your eyes or eyes that are um, maybe even slightly smaller and see if you can fit them in so that they're almost flush with the top. And that's how you know how far to keep going and how big to make it as well. So I like to flatten the bottom just a little bit. You don't have to overdo it. Um, and I just do that with my little compression tool right here. We are going to make a little spine for our owl. I'm gonna put a hole right in the top of the torso here with the awl and then right in the base of the head. You want it to go you know, about up to here. You don't need it to go all the way through. I'm gonna take a piece of wire that's maybe two and a half inches long, and I'm just going to attach these two just like this. And we will wrap this with more core wool. We're gonna wrap this around, and this is going to form our join, but then the wire is gonna help hold them together as well. So you can start with your coarse needle and then move up to something a little less coarse. Now he's ready for a top coat. I like to make a blend of these two for a slightly modeled look on the body. This is what I'm going for is something modeled. And you at least want to cover from here down and just around this part of the tail. To make the modeled bits, all we're going to do is take a little fluff of our CX2 and a little bit of the barn wood. I tend to do a little layering, so brown, white, let's say brown, white, and then just pull and stack and pull and stack these two together. Take your CX2 and cover just towards the top. So I'm just gonna put this right on top here and then layer little bits of this modeled mixture right around here. Just lay it right on top, just like that. So now we needle felt it down. I like to use my fine needles for this because they're not gonna pull the wool uh, with such tension that they're, it's going to leave you know big marks or stretch or stretch the fiber so needle felt and cover your little bird leave the eye sockets don't bury the eye sockets leave those how you had them and just cover this entire bird or as much as you want that's going to be visible with this nice little blended mixture and use your fine needles to get full coverage 
all the way around. So my little guy is covered all the way around. All of the feathers that we make on our little guy, whether it's the head or the wings or the tail or the back, is all gonna follow the same process and the same blend. Today we're using NZ New Zealand Corydell in Acorn for the feathers and natural dark. This is a staple length or the length of the, the fibers natural length. I take a couple of these because this is the, the primary blend that you're going to use and then pull off a very thin amount of the dark brown and again a very thin amount so you can see this is like almost see-through on the back of my hands of the dark brown. Stack and pull until you're happy with it. We are ready to start applying them to our bird. When I apply them to the owl we're going to trim it, so flatten it out so that it's relatively flat. And then each of these lengths, they're, they're generally just like over three inches long. I am going to cut them into one inch lengths, approximately. This is longer than you need, but what you need is the ability to fold the fibers. We are going to start layering at the base of the head, and I like to layer one layer and then a layer on top and a layer on top until we cover our head with fibers. This is what that looks like. I'm gonna just take a little piece here. We do a single layer. So we're gonna take this and you kind of fan it out. We are going to attach this right here at the base of the head. I am using a 38 star spiral and we're just going to needle felt in the middle of the length here that we cut all the way across. An anchor it in really well. And, and just in a straight line. Now we have that done, you're gonna fold this down and lightly tack into that little fold that you've created, just in a couple of spots. You don't wanna to go too far down. So to decide how far to put these layers apart, we're not trying to make something that sticks straight out. We want them to kind of lay down. We need a little space in between each layer. So I'm putting about a pencil distance between each layer. If my pencil is here, then the part that I needle felt is gonna be just above the pencil. And I just kind of get it laying down there and then start needle felting from each side. So see we have, it's kind of this fluffy business happening. You're gonna fold this guy down also and lightly tack into that very top rim that you've made. You are going to cover the entire head in the same manner, all the way up around the head and just to the top right here where the beak is. So just keep trimming all the way around. So this is what my head looks like, the back of the head, once it's all covered. You could give it a little bit of a trim, but you can see kind of how fluffy he is. Let's jump to the front side of said bird and look at how to give him his little eye feathers off the eye socket. For that, I am just using the New Zealand natural medium and oh, just a pinch of the natural dark. And again, with a little bit of blending. Now these, uh, we're going to be trimming them down. So this is what they look like in the full length. And to trim that eye socket, we're doing about the same thing. We're gonna leave the eye socket right there bare. And then we're just gonna fold these fibers we're gonna put them in right in half in the first place. So put it right there, use your coarse needle, and poke. So again, needle felt in the fold and then just work it back out. If you don't feel, if you feel like you folded it too far, you can do what I'm doing here and just kind of gather it back towards that eye socket. You want these feathers, if you will, to stick out from behind the eye. So you don't want them to be too far out there. You could put your eyes in first, but you don't want them too far out there. You want them to be like tucked right underneath the eye. Now our eye fibers are in and those are ready to go. Let's kind of start maybe trimming the head and then we'll add the wings and the tail into there. 
I like to use our Furbit comb to kind of, we're gonna get these eye, we get these eye fibers just going this way, so they're kind of out of our way. And then we're gonna get these head fibers out. Comb them out so that you can see what shape they actually make. And now to trim, follow, kind of follow the shape of the head. And we don't want them too, too short, but we also don't want them too, too long. I like to leave some maybe right where it's gonna be between the eyes, maybe just a little bit taller. But go at it slowly, and then you can go in and just kind of chop some bits out to kind of break it up a little bit. Comb it down so you can see how it's going to look. For these eye fibers, I do want to trim them, but I'm going to do the final trim once the glass eyes are in place. So you can start with a roundish trim just to kind of get everything down. You can just take a gradual approach and do little bits at a time. We'll leave it here for now until we get our beak in place and then we'll go in and do our final trim on those. Let's get our wings and tail into place. Doing these, you're going to start with your shapes here. You have two wings and one little tail, which is kind of long and it's your option to cover them in the brown uh, wool batting first. This will add a little bit of bulk to these otherwise really flat shapes. There's no mystery here. You're just going to pull off a little tuft of wool, lay it over your wing, and needle felt it down with your fine felting needles. The tail leave plain. I wouldn't add any bulk to the tail. Then you're gonna take your same feathery fiber mixture, and you will start at the base of each wing and at the base of the tail and just start building up layers. So start right there, anchor it in well, fold it down, and continue the same process like we did on the head until all of these are covered. When you're ready sort of to move on to the next phase, you're going to have this. I like to kind of tuck them right here under the side of where the head is going to be. Get these before I, especially before I finish this. So pull these head fibers up and decide exactly where you want those wings are going to, to be on your bird. And needle felt all around the perimeter to get those attached. The other wing the same. Now we just have room right here for our little tail. I like the tail to stick off the bird about, about like that, like about an inch or so. You can take a little bit of your modeled blend here and just needle felt it right just onto the top of that. Just hide what's underneath right, just right there. That's all that's going to show. We'll put the tail on here and this is, you don't know how much you need. It depends on until you have your bird done. So again, you want this to stick off about right there. First thing I'm gonna try and do is just start to bury that whole felt a little bit. And then we're going to layer, put more of our layers right on top while not disturbing our wings. The same blend right here on the back, the same lengths, totally fine and we just layer and cover this up right there. So now you're just going to trim your bird until you're happy. I don't want those tail feathers too long, but I don't want them too straight either. So I'm gonna cut a bit and then cut into them and shape them up the side. See all that? I'm gonna comb everybody up and just trim them together. Let's go over here. Trim and comb and trim and comb and just check in and see how you're liking everything. So this is kind of fun. I mean, he's looking kind of wooly and wild and, and fun and interesting. But what you can do is go in now with your felting needle and start coaxing these little bits down and defining 
here's the wing, here's the tail. And you don't have to needle felt it all flat, but you can get it to lay down a little bit and have a little more, it just be tamed a little more. A bird's feathers, um, owl's feathers tend to be really beautiful and very specific. We're just kind of going for the essence of owl here. This way it starts to look a little more like feathers and you can work on shaping that with your felting needle so that the wing is really separate from what's the tail. And then in here even, you can come in and trim so that it's a little more defined. In order to put our eyes in, of course, we have to make a really nice hole. You can just use a coarse needle if that's all you have, but you can also use an awl, which is a great tool for getting that eye socket. Here's the eyes that we made together at the beginning of the show, right here. They don't need to be all that long. It helps to get a nice sharp point. So when you make your cut, just angle that, uh, that cut, but they'll go in with an awl anyway. So give it a snip. And of course we want to glue them into place, but before we do that, just find your position so that you are happy with it. And I will go ahead and make a hole with my awl. That's where I'm gonna want them to be. So I will use my awl to make that hole a little bit better. Once you know where you want them, then add the glue. Now, we want these feathers, all of these. We want these kind of laying down and we want some, I like the, to see like there's some difference between the two. That's up to you if you want them all to go together. So trim in here a little bit. Like a horned owl, these might be, you know, these might spike out more, but just use your, just use your own discernment on what you want these little eye feathers to look like. Okay, here's our little beak that we made. It's just got the, it's just got a dull little sheen to it, which is perfect. So again, we want to, we're just gonna make a hole right here in the face. Now, if you wanna hang yours like mine, if you wanna make this into an ornament, then ideally you will run the string through now at some point. So I have, this is just some fishing line that I queued up uh, to hang him. And if you decide not to use that later, you can always cut it out. But I would run it through the head right now. I just made it whatever length. There we go. So we have this in here now. Let's make a little hole for our beak. The beak, as you can see, is positioned a little above the eye and a little above the eyes and a little below. So just see where your wire hole, where your wire is mounted. Add glue to this, but I always find my place first before I put the glue in. And then here's our little feet that we made for him. So again, just decide where you want those to be on the body. I like them just to the front right here. So we'll add two little holes right here with our awl. I just use a straight awl for this. You might have to do it uh, you know, a few times because these leg wires are kind of twisted and gnarled. They're not gonna go in as easily as the eye wires. So make a few holes and do what you need to do to get that into place. This is just glue. You just need some kind of permanent glue in these guys to get everything in place. And I would just put the, the glue right onto the wire here Um, but here they are, two crazy, two crazy owls just hanging out. And notice how this one, I've really tamed down all the fiber on the wings and gotten it all laid down. And that's what I'll do is just go around and needle felt this all down because I don't want him to be big and bushy. And it's the same for the top of the head. There's no reason for that to all stick up unless you just like it. Um, but you don't have to leave it up just because you gave him a nice fluff you can tame it all down and get it so it doesn't look so big but it still has fibery character if you will yeah spend a little time making your owl there's no reason to rush they're super fun get them all shaped add some adornments and we really look forward to, to seeing them because i know there's going to be a fun variety